with stocks near all-time highs and with valuations stretched. In this week's video, we'll review the latest charts to help us answer the question, is it really different this time? Since we'll be tying together numerous concepts covered in past videos, we will be moving quickly. This is an annual chart of the Dow Jones Industrial Average. This is 1935 on the left side of your screen. We'll start with the technicals, then we'll shift gears to valuations, then we'll look at some economic fundamentals, as well as demographic information, and we'll tie it all together. This looks noisy and confusing. We'll walk through it step by step. Keep your eye on my cursor. And all we'll be doing here is basic pattern recognition. In this case, we've got indicators, the True Strength Index, Bollinger Band Width, and RSI. If you want to learn more about the indicators, you can Google stockcharts.com, followed by the name of the indicator, and you can find a wealth of information, including the text here that appears on your screen. We're going to walk through rapidly from 1935 all the way up to the present day. We've got consolidation here. These are annual candlesticks, long-term consolidation, a breakout, a bullish moving average crossover where the blue moving average goes above the red. The true strength index here, black moves above red. The Bollinger Band width had been falling and it turned back up. RSI was hovering around 50 and then rallied to above 70. There is a reason why we chose 1935. Notice the true strength index only goes back to this period here. These are all things that we could see, measure, and put in a model. We didn't have to forecast anything. What happened next? Since we know the longer a market goes sideways, the bigger the move we can expect to get. It's not particularly surprising that the Dow Jones Industrial Average rallied for an additional 15 years and tacked on an additional 322% after we could see all of this observable and measurable evidence. Since we know at some point the market's going to consolidate its gains, it's not particularly surprising that a strong secular trend that lasted 15 years plus was followed by sideways movement and some normal give back. We can see here when the trend started to wane, TSI looks quite a bit different than it did here. The Bollinger Band width, instead of rising, reverses and starts to fall. This doesn't look anything like this. And RSI, instead of rising, recapturing 70 and staying basically above 70, now drops clearly below 70. Similar situation here as the period of consolidation is nearing an end. Just like this point here, TSI starts to turn up. Similar to this point here, Bollinger bandwidth had been falling, then it turns up from low levels. And RSI, similar to this move here, goes from roughly the center line and recaptures 70. After we could see all of this, it's observable and measurable, really good things happen for a long period of time. In this case, from point A, which is 12-31-1985, to point B, which was the daily peak in the Dow Jones Industrial Average on January 14th of 2000. After we could see all of this measurable and observable improvement, the Dow tacked on an additional 658% from this point here, and the rally lasted 14 years. We know at some point the market's going to need to consolidate its gains. This is a very big move over a very long period of time. We get a very, very similar look to this turn here. TSI, this point here doesn't look anything like this bearish cross here. Bollinger bandwidth rolled over here. It's rolling over here in a similar manner and very, very similar to dropping out here in the bearish case. RSI had been well above 70. It drops below here. We can see it. This looks different than anything during this period here. Thus, from a probability perspective, we can learn a lot in the present day by asking, does the present day look more like this constructive turn here? 
in this constructive turn here? Or does the present day have that concerning waning momentum look that we had here and here? Before we move forward, it's extremely important to note, we are simply comparing historical facts to present day facts. We're not forecasting. This has nothing to do with opinions. If we fast forward to the present day, in this case, this chart is dated August 16th, 2018. It's pretty easy to see that the present day here, black moving above, looks a lot like this constructive period here and this constructive period here, and really doesn't look anything like this period here or this period here. The same can be said for Bollinger Band with an RSI. Unequivocally, the look in the present day looks a lot more like this period here and this period here relative to this period here and this period here. Since we're looking at visuals here, it can be helpful to draw the lines to see the similarities between this point, this point, and this point, this point, this point, and this point, this point, this point, and this point. A similar approach makes it abundantly clear the present day as of August 16th, 2018 looks nothing like the peaking process in the year 2000. The same can be said for this waning momentum look here that led to losses and consolidation that lasted years. Thus, if the present day looks more like this period and this period, and we know that this case here was followed by 15 years of gains, 322% additional gains, 14 years, 658% additional in case two. This look here and the fact that TSI did not complete the bullish cross in the present day case until the end of calendar year 2016, meaning less than two years ago, we could be less than two years into something like this and less than two years into something like this. And you've probably seen a pattern emerge, consolidation, secular trend, consolidation, strong secular trend, consolidation. The facts that we have in hand today don't place consolidation or losses similar to this or this as a high probability event in the present day. The probabilities are much more favorable based on the facts that we have in hand today that good things could happen for a long period of time. Good things could happen for a long period of time. Good things could happen for a long period of time. Now let's focus on the main topic of the video. Is it really different this time? We've just shown with facts, no opinions, that this point A here is very, very similar to this point A here, which is very, very similar to this point A here, which aligns with the present day. We know what happened after this point A. We know what happened after this point A. Therefore, based on the facts in hand, unless we are willing to subscribe to the it's different this time theory of markets, we have to remain open to the distinct possibility that good things could happen for a long period of time. If we're expecting a major peak, and based on the facts that we have in hand, it would have to be different this time. Do we see any point on this graph where we get a whipsaw with this moving average crossover? The answer is no. Do we see any point on this graph where Bollinger Bandwidth turns up and then immediately turns down? We do not. Do we see any point on this graph where RSI is clearly above 70, where really bad things happened? The answer is no. During this period here, RSI for the most part stays above 70, tips its hand a little bit here that we should be paying closer attention. Here, it stays above 70 the entire time. This looks a lot like this and doesn't look anything like this or this. And to subscribe to the hypothesis that good things could happen for a long period of time, we don't have to make any claim that it's different this time. In fact, it's the same. It's following the same pattern. 
There's nothing particularly different about this point A, this point A, or this point A before we move to valuations. Because you can make an argument that valuations are what's different in the present day. We are not forecasting here. We are simply making probabilistic statements based on the facts that we have in hand as of August 16th, 2018. If the facts change, then we have to adjust our probabilistic outlook. And in order to keep our ego at bay, we have to maintain maximum flexibility, take it day by day, and remain open to all outcomes. That's what we've been doing. It's been working well, and we will continue to do it. And if from a technical perspective, if you're still not satisfied here, although we have consolidation of bullish breakout, consolidation of bullish breakout, consolidation of bullish breakout, bullish moving average crossover, bullish moving average crossover, bullish moving average crossover. We have the same look for TSI, Bollinger Bandwidth, and RSI. If you're still not convinced technically, we could walk through with PPO, the Copic Curve, and the Commodity Channel Index and draw the exact same conclusions, which speaks to the weight of the evidence. Now on to valuations, and we're still taking a is it different this time perspective. Wouldn't we have to believe that valuations would be different if good things happen for a long period of time? As always, let's use facts to answer that question. A chart from Ned Davis Research, we're just annotating their chart. It contains historical data for the S&P 500's median price to sales ratio shown in red going back to the mid 1960s. We have to make sure when we look at valuation data that we're not getting stung with hindsight bias. At this point here, looking backwards inside of this box here, it would be very, very easy to say and to say factually, valuations are high and thus risk is high and the upside in the stock market is severely limited going forward. How could you have said that here? If you look backwards, valuations going back to the mid 1960s, they're high here as high as they were here, and a lot higher than they were here. This point here and this point here are as high as any point that we can see on this graph. And thus, this statement right here could have been made at any point between 1983 and 1993. Based on what we know at this point, we can't predict the future here. We can just look backwards. At this point here, valuations are high and thus risk is high and upside is severely limited. That would be a logical statement based on the facts in hand. Now notice, we could have made that statement between 1983 and 1993. Where does that period show up on our annual Dow chart? The answer is right here which is very, very similar to the present day. Even with all of these positive technicals and positive breakouts, bullish moving average crossovers, TSI cross, Bollinger bandwidth turning up and RSI recapturing 70 for the first time in a long time. Right here, we could have been skeptical and we could have said valuations are high and thus risk is high and upside is severely limited in the next decade. So you might be thinking, so you're telling me that valuations are going to expand going forward. Could have made the same argument or asked the same question here. So you're telling me that valuations are going to expand here. If the stock market's going to continue to go up, valuations have to expand outside of what we know from a historical perspective. Well, that's exactly what happened. Valuations expanded in a way that no one could have ever imagined with the data that they had in hand here. Thus, if it was possible for valuations 
to expand to levels that no one ever would have thought possible here. If multiple expansion is possible here, then it's possible here. This point here is not materially different than this point here. When we look backwards from this point here, valuations look extended. Upside seems limited. Valuations look extended. Upside seems limited. Just as no one knew how high this red line could get at this point here, no one knows how high this red line can get here. And as reformed broker noted on Twitter, there are no immutable laws in finance, which is a good lesson for people who assume they have the markets completely figured out. There was no law that told us that valuations could expand beyond our wildest dreams from this point here. Just as there's no law that tells us valuations can expand in the future beyond our wildest dreams. Valuations have been rising for a long, long time. The concept that there are no immutable laws in finance applied here to valuations, and it can be applied here as well in a logical manner. During this period here, we get what's known as multiple expansion. If we got multiple expansion during this period here, nothing says we can't see multiple expansion in the future. We have to understand when valuations are useful and when they're not as useful. It's very, very similar to the utility of RSI. Oscillators work well when markets are range bound. Oscillators work well when markets are range bound. RSI and oscillators do not work well during strong secular trends. Oscillators do not work particularly well during strong secular trends. The same concepts apply to valuations. When the stock market is in a range and valuations get high near the top of the range, just like an oscillator, it can be helpful. We're overbought, we're overvalued. But once we break out of the range, but just as RSI is not particularly helpful as an overbought indicator in strongly trending markets, historical valuations looking backwards are not particularly useful as an overvalued indicator or timing indicator during strong secular trends. Inside of this box here, 1983 to 1993, Valuations based on what we know look extended. Therefore, at any time between 1983 and 1993, based on what we know looking backwards, we could have said valuations will limit gains going forward. We could have said that at the beginning of 1983, could have said at the beginning of 1984, all the way out to 1993, or at any point during this period here. Valuations will limit gains, valuations will limit gains, valuations will limit gains. You can see right here, they didn't limit gains. If we bought on January 1st, 1983, we would have made 986% in the S&P 500 and over 2,000% in the NASDAQ from a period where we logically could have said Valuations are extended and they're going to limit gains. These are astronomical gains here. During this entire period, valuations would have been waving yellow or major red flags. So in all actuality, based on this chart here, from a technical perspective, to buy into good things could happen for a long period of time. We don't have to buy into anything being different. In fact, we have to buy into the pattern being the same. The facts in hand align with good things could happen for a long period of time. The same thing is true for valuations. Nothing different has to happen in the future. In fact, the pattern would repeat itself. Valuations looked high 
and we had major multiple expansion, nothing says that we can't once again see a very similar pattern with multiple expansion. To buy into the concept that good things could happen for a long period of time, we do not have to buy into the concept that anything is different from a technical perspective or anything would be different from a multiple expansion perspective. This is price to sales here. We've performed a similar, we're really not sure how valuations are helpful from a timing perspective analysis on standard PEs in the past. You can find that analysis by Googling this title here and looking for this in the search results. The video is dated January 6, 2017. Good things have happened in the stock market since January 6, 2017. Valuations have not been a showstopper since January 6, 2017. What about the Schiller PE? Covered that as well. The median Schiller PE on 12-31-1982 was 14.83. So if I look backwards from this point here, using the Schiller PE, I would have said, Stocks are overvalued, stocks are overvalued, stocks are overvalued, stocks are overvalued, stocks are way overvalued, stocks are way overvalued, stocks are overvalued. Stocks would have looked overvalued relative to what we knew on 12-31-1982 for a long, long time in here. In this 13-year period here, they are clearly overvalued by historical standards. And we would have missed big, big moves in the stock market. You can find this detailed analysis where we walk through showing what we knew in the stock market and what we knew from a valuation perspective by Googling this title here and looking for this video dated January 12, 2018. And notice the period here where things start to change. Valuations. From a Schiller PE perspective, we get multiple expansion that starts in a big way in the early 1980s. That aligns very, very well with our analysis here. If we can get multiple expansion in the 80s, we can get multiple expansion in the present day. Since we're using a weight of the evidence approach, what else have we covered that ties us to the early 1980s. The answer is demographics. You can find that detailed analysis by Googling this title here, and finding this video dated September 1st, 2017. Good things have also happened in the stock market since September 1st, 2017. How about the economy? CNBC dated August 13th, 2018. The U.S. economy is firing on all cylinders, says expert. There's nothing from a fundamental perspective that's out of whack with the rest of the weight of the evidence. And if you think back to all of the topics we've covered in these videos, many of them align perfectly with these concepts including the long-term breakouts in the stock bond charts. You can find those charts by Googling this title here. It's a short takes post dated February 16th. And the psychology also lines up perfectly. If you feel like that's not possible because you're looking backwards, that's exactly how you would have felt here logically looking backwards. That's exactly how you would have felt here logically looking backwards. We only know what we know, and that means looking backwards. Psychologically, if someone told you that valuations were going to expand significantly, it would have been very, very easy to be skeptical, and yet that's exactly what happened. The psychology of the markets and recency bias was covered in detail in this video. You can find it by Googling this title here and look in the search results for the video dated May 11th, 2018. But stocks have been rising for a long, long time. They can't keep going up. Could have said the exact same thing here in the early 1980s. 
Stocks have been rising for a long, long time. They can't keep going up. Well, they did keep going up. Look where we are again. Could have said stocks can't keep going up. They've been going up for eight years. We could have said that in the early 1980s, which once again aligns with the technicals. Early 1980s, good things happened for a long period of time. This point here looks similar to this point here. What about valuations relative to this point here? Here it is right here. Here's the early 1980s right here, right where the multiple expansion kicks into high gear. Anything else tying us to the early 1980s? Yes. A December 30th, 2016 video covered the first positive outside year in the stock market since 1982. 2016, technically very, very similar to some very rare occurrences that happened in 1982. If you're watching this, a logical comeback might be, what about the small sample size? You really only have two cases to fall back on. If you study charts and you know your market fractals, you know this is a fractal. It's very, very common on all time frames. The longer we go sideways, the bigger the move we can expect to get. The longer we go sideways, the bigger the move we can expect to get. The longer we go sideways. Applies to shorter term time frames. Applies to the present day. S&P 500 went sideways, consolidated in 2016, was followed by a strong secular trend. The market needed to consolidate its gains. That takes us to August 17th, 2018. We can find this type of pattern, consolidation followed by a strong trend on all types of time frames: One minute charts, 60 minute charts, multiple year charts. S&P 500, 1988 to 2000, market needs to consolidate its gains. Market needs to consolidate its gains. Market rallies needs to consolidate. Rallies needs to consolidate. And even if this is a problem, the weight of the evidence aligns with the theory that we should remain open to the distinct possibility that good things could happen for a long period of time. Another fair question, why do you keep showing these long-term charts? because these are the most important charts. If we found this pattern on a 30 minute chart, it would be more relevant than a one minute chart. If we found this pattern on a weekly chart, it would be more relevant and take precedent over anything we're seeing on a daily chart. This is the strong secular trend. They don't change very often. How many crossovers do we get in TSI between 1935 and the present day? One, two, three, four. This is the fifth one. The look of this chart here tells us that until something changes, until the weight of the evidence changes, our bias should be that anything we see on shorter term charts, the bias until proven otherwise, and that may happen, it may be proven otherwise, the bias is for it to be resolved in a bullish manner. And even if good things happen for a long period of time, it's going to be difficult. Volatility is 100% normal and to be expected. Nowhere in this analysis have we said it's going to be easy going forward, even if something like this happens or something like this happens. To the contrary, we should expect volatility and understand that even if secular trends rule the day in a bullish manner. There are many, many common missteps that could derail us relative to our long-term goal in a market like this, which is to navigate between a point A and a point B that could be several years down the road. And these charts are extremely important because they can help us with this concept here. You have to decide what your highest priorities are and have the courage to say no to other things. Our highest priority is to try to navigate between a point A and a point B that could be several years down the road. One of the ways we could derail ourselves is by overtrading, trying to avoid 100% normal and to be expected volatility.
A fair question might be, this analysis really doesn't help us with the 2008 scenario. What happens if the present day looks like 2008? We just covered that this week. You can find it by Googling this title here or Googling short takes and finding our blog on ccmmarketmodel.com. August 15th, see it market. Asset class behavior during the peaking process in 2008 looks nothing like, not even remotely close to asset class behavior in 2018. You can find these charts in the post by Googling this title here with see it market. We've covered this topic before, so we'll move quickly on this one. You're probably going to be hearing a lot in the coming days that this is the longest bull market in the history of mankind. You have to keep all of that in the proper context. USA Today, January 8th, 2016. The Standard & Poor's 1500 Index, a broad basket of large, mid, and small company stocks, shows that the average stock's distance from its 52-week high is 26.9%, meaning the average stock just had a bear market in 2016. And if you want to get into a little bit more detail, you can Google this title here and find this excellent piece and all of this wonderful factual evidence making the case that from mid-2015 to early 2016, we had a bear market. It may also be worth a visit to the new website to see the FAQs. We've got new and expanded FAQs covering traditional investing, low-cost passive investing, and the online slash robo strategies that are currently in vogue. The material in this video has no regard to the specific investment objectives, financial situation, or particular needs of any viewer. This video is presented solely for informational purposes and is not to be construed as a solicitation or offer to buy or sell any security or any related financial instruments, nor should any of the content be taken as investment advice. Any opinions expressed in this video are subject to change without notice, and Shivako Capital Management, LLC, or CCM, is not under any obligation to update or keep current the information contained herein. CCM and its respective officers and associates or clients may have an interest in the securities or derivatives of any entities referred to in this material. CCM accepts no liability whatsoever for any loss or damage of any kind arising out of the use of all or any part of this material. We recommend that you consult with a licensed and qualified professional before making any investment decision.